And now let's begin with the understanding of a fresh and an extremely important concept that is conormal points. Consider a situation wherein you have three distinct points A, B, C on the parabola such that when you draw normals at these three points, they come out to be concurrent. That is, all these normals are passing through a common point or they are intersecting each other at a single point. In this case, I say that A, B and C are nothing but co-normal points. So, what did we say? That points are co-normal only when the normals at them are concurrent. Co-normal, concurrent normals. That's how you can remember it. Now, there's another version of understanding this concept. Let me share that with you as well. Let's say P is a point. Okay, P is just any point. And from it, I'm asking you to draw normals to this parabola. Okay, so the task is from P, draw normals to this parabola. Let's say N1 is one such normal to this parabola at point A. That means the point of contact for this normal is A. So at A, when I draw a tangent, it will be norm, it will be perpendicular to N1. Right? Let's say N2 is another such normal to the parabola at point B. So B in here is the point of contact for this normal. Which means what? At point B, when I draw the tangent, it will be perpendicular to N2. Let's say N3 is another such normal to the parabola at point C. So for this normal, C is the point of contact. That means at C, when I'm going to draw the tangent, it will be perpendicular to N3. Right? So right now, the picture that you can see from P, I have been able to draw three distinct normals to my parabola corresponding to the three points of contact A, B and C. These three points of contact are called co-normal points. They are also the feet of the normals. All right. So from here, I can deduce that as many distinct normals I can draw from point P to my parabola, those many co-normal points will be generated. So this question arises, from a point, how many normals can you draw to a parabola? Or in other words, how many co-normal points can exist for a parabola? Is there a bar to the maximum number of co-normal points? Yes. Let's find that out. Now, P is some constant point in the plane from where I am drawing the normals. So, the coordinates of P will look like, let's say, H, K, where mind it, H and K are simply constants. Cool. From point P, let's say, I have a normal of slope M being drawn to this parabola. So, where are we going? Are you understanding? As many distinct normals we get from point P, those many co-normal points will be generated. Right? So, that's where I'm leading to. So, let's say I have one normal which is being drawn from point P to this parabola of slope M. So, in the slope form, the equation of this normal will look like y equals mx minus 2am minus am cube. Right? Now, because this normal is being drawn from point P, P is sitting on this normal. So, coordinates of P will satisfy the equation of this normal. So, I will get K equals MH minus 2AM minus AM cube. So, in the next step, I can write this as AM cube plus 2AM plus K minus MH equals 0. Let me simplify this further. This will be a m cube plus 2a minus h into m plus k equals 0. Now, I'll write one more step, which will be the most standard look of this equation. a m cube plus 0 m square plus 2a minus h into m plus k equals 0. And what is this, boys and girls? This is a cubic equation in m. Yes, wherein m was nothing but the slope of the normal being drawn from p to the parabola. But in here, 
the value of m which satisfies this equation is a root of this cubic equation. Right? That means whatever is the nature of roots of this cubic equation, same is going to be the nature of the slopes of the normals being drawn from p to my parabola. Now a cubic equation has three roots. Let's call them m1, m2, m3. One case can be when all the three roots are real. Okay? Other case can be when any one root is real and the other two are imaginary. Okay? Trust me, there will be only two cases. If you are thinking there will be a third case of two roots being real and one being imaginary, it cannot exist because imaginary roots always occur in conjugate pairs. So that's it. The cases for nature of roots are exhausted. If the first case prevails, that means all the three roots are real, this would imply what? That you will get three distinct real values of the slopes, which would imply there will be three distinct normals being drawn from P to my parabola and hence I will get three co-normal points. Got it? If the second case prevails, one root is real, other two are imaginary, this would mean that there is exactly one distinct real value of the slope, which implies that exactly one normal can be drawn from P to my parabola. Did you understand? So either there are three normals and hence three co-normal points or there is just one normal. But now we have answered our question. What was that? What is the maximum number of normals which can be drawn from a point to the parabola? The answer is 3. And hence, the maximum number of co-normal points that you can get is also 3. Got it? Wasn't this beautiful? Now, let me take you to another discussion, which is again very important and very, very applicable when it comes to questions. Okay. I want you to recall the relationship between roots and coefficients for a cubic equation. See, m1, m2, m3 are roots of this cubic equation. Let's consider the case when all the three roots are real. That means consider the case when from p you are able to draw three distinct normals to the parabola and hence you're getting three co-normal points. Okay, so in this scenario, I want you to quickly recall the relationship between roots and coefficients of a cubic equation. The very first relationship said that some of the roots, some of the three roots is equal to minus of coefficient of m square upon coefficient of m cube. That means 0 upon a, which is simply 0. All right. Second, sum of product of roots taken two at a time. Okay. What was this equal to? Coefficient of m upon coefficient of m cube. That means 2a minus h upon a. And third in the last relation which talked about product of roots taken all three at a time which was minus of constant term upon coefficient of m cube that means minus k upon a. Alright, so what is the deduction from here? What is the most important deduction from here? That once you are sure that from point P three distinct normals of three distinct slopes m1, m2, m3 can be drawn to my parabola or once you are sure that there are three co-normal points in the picture corresponding to the three normals, then the slopes of those three normals will be satisfying each of these three relations. You got it? These three equations that you can see are actually expressing relationship between the slopes of the three normals and the constant terms involved in the story. One is A which comes from the equation of the parabola and you have h and k which are the constants sitting in the point p's coordinates. Alright, so this is a major major takeaway from entire discussion that the moment you have three distinct normals from a point to my parabola, the slopes of those three normals will be satisfying each of these three relations. Cool? Now, before I reveal to you some really amazing properties of co-normal points, there's one little fact that I want to share with you. Let's say the parameter of point A is T1, B is T2, and C is T3. 
right? So A is the point of contact for the normal N1 having slope M1. B is the point of contact for normal N2 having slope M2. And C is the point of contact for N3 having slope M3, right? Then I know that for the parabola y square equals 4ax, the relationship between slope and parameter is that slope is negative of the parameter. So I can replace m1 with minus t1, m2 with minus t2, m3 with minus t3. Then the very first relationship written over here transforms to minus t1 minus t2 minus t3 equals 0. Multiply throughout by minus sign and you get t1 plus t2 plus t3 equals 0 which gives you a very, very important deduction that if you have three co-normal points sitting on the parabola, then the sum of their parameters is always zero. Okay, understood? Now, let me show you the very first property of co-normal points. It says algebraic sum of ordinates of the feet of three normals, that means the co-normal points, drawn to a parabola from a given point is zero. Okay, let me simplify this for you. Suppose you have three co-normal points sitting on the parabola, then the sum of their y-coordinates always is zero. Okay, so in this scenario, let's say A, B and C are my co-normal points. I can write the coordinates of these three points either in terms of slope or in terms of parameter. So I will say that A, let's say in terms of parameter T1 looks like A T1 square comma 2 A T1. Now, T1 is equal to minus M1. We know this. And M1 is the slope of the first normal. So, in terms of slope, the coordinates of A will look like what? A M1 square comma minus 2 A M1. Right. Similarly, let T2 be the parameter of point B. Then B will look like A T2 square comma 2 A T2. Okay. Or T2 is minus M2, where M2 is the slope of the second normal. Yes. So, in terms of slope, it will look like a m2 square comma minus 2 a m2. Similarly, c in terms of parameter t3 will look like a t3 square comma 2 a t3 or m3 which is the slope of this third normal I know is what? Minus t3. So, this will be a into m3 square comma minus 2 a m3. So, either pick up the parametric coordinates look of the three points and add the y coordinates. What will you get? 2a t1 plus 2a t2 plus 2a t3, which will give you 2a times t1 plus t2 plus t3. And I just now deduced it for you that the moment you have three points as co normal, the sum of the parameters is always zero. So this part is zero, that means this entire sum is zero, hence proved that sum of the y coordinates of the three co normal points is zero. If you pick up the slope version of their coordinates and add the y coordinates, you will get minus 2a m1 plus minus 2a m2 plus minus 2a m3, which will give you minus 2a times m1 plus m2 plus m3. This also you know is zero. Why? Because when you have three co-normal points corresponding to the three normals, then the sum of the slopes of these three normals is always zero. We've just proved it. So this is zero. That means this entire sum is zero. Again, we've proved that the sum of the y coordinates of the three co-normal points is always zero. Got it? And hence, the first property is deduced. Basically, it's proved completely. Fine. Let me now show you the second property. This property says that centroid of the triangle formed by co-normal points as vertices always lies on the axis of the parabola. So if I consider the parabola y square equals 4ax, I know its axis is the x-axis. In here, if A, B, C are my three co-normal points, I want to consider the triangle having these co-normal points as vertices. Then the claim is that the centroid of this particular triangle will lie on the axis of the parabola. So for this situation, I have to show that if let's say G represents the centroid of triangle ABC, G lies on x-axis. That is my aim to show. So in order to show that a point lies on the x-axis, it is sufficient for me to show that its y-coordinate is zero. Right, so I am interested in showing that the y-coordinate of point G is 0. All right. I know that if I am aware of the coordinates of the vertices of a triangle, 
I can successfully find the coordinates of its centroid. So let's say A in terms of parameter T1 is A T1 square comma 2 A T1. B in terms of parameter T2 is A T2 square comma 2 A T2. And C in terms of parameter T3 is A2, A T3 square comma 2 A T3. Now it's your choice. You could have taken the coordinates of A, B, C in terms of slope as well. Nothing would have changed. I'll just tell you. So suppose I take the coordinates of A, B, C in terms of the parameters T1, T2, T3. All right. Now, this implies that I am aware of the coordinates of the three vertices of the triangle. Yes. So now, the x coordinate of the centroid will be sum of the x coordinates of A, B, C divided by 3. And the y coordinate of the centroid will be sum of the y coordinates of A, B, C divided by 3. My target is to prove that y coordinate of G is 0. So let's just compute the y coordinate of the centroid G. Okay. So what will be the y coordinate? It will be 2A T1 plus 2A T2 plus 2A T3 upon 3, which eventually gives you 2A times T1 plus T2 plus T3 upon 3. But mind that A, B, C were not just any three random points. They were co-normal points. So, the sum of their parameters is 0. That means this quantity is 0 and hence eventually what you get is the Y coordinate of your centroid is 0. Bingo! Your centroid lies on the X axis, which is the axis of this parabola. If you, could have take, if you would have taken the coordinates of ABC in terms of slope M, the point A would have looked like what? AM1 square comma minus 2AM1. This would have been looking like AM2 square comma minus 2AM2. And this would be AM3 square comma minus 2AM3. So now when you add the Y coordinates and divide by 3, you will get minus 2A upon 3 into m1 plus m2 plus m3, which again I know is 0 because a, b, c are co-normal points corresponding to the three normals. So the slopes of those three normals will add up to give you 0. Eventually, your answer is 0, which is the y coordinate of your centroid. Okay, so keep these properties very, very nicely in your, in your mind. The first property said that whenever you take Whenever you have three co-normal points, the sum of their y coordinates is always zero. And the second property said that when you have three co-normal points and you consider them to be the vertices of a triangle, the centroid of that triangle will always lie on the axis of the parabola. Got it?